This is problem 42A in uh, College Accounting, 10th edition. And wanted to um, have you print the first two pages of the Excel uh, workbook that I sent you because the first and second pages have um, the worksheet. And you're going to need a completed worksheet to look at for what we're going to do. So this, you would want to print the first sheet here, which is the trial balance and adjustments. So print that page. And also print the second page, which would be the adjusted trial balance, the income statement, and the balance sheet part of the worksheet. So you actually have those to look at. Because what we're going to be doing is taking the worksheet and completing the three financial statements. So, once they're printed, we're going to go to page 3 of 6. And notice when you're doing this now, we're going to do the income statement first. So this is for Chelsea Decorators. And this is the income statement. And the date is for the month ended March 31 of the current year. Okay, so I'll just leave that empty. So what we're going to do in the income statement is compare the revenue account to the expense accounts. If the revenue is larger than the expenses, you would end up with a net income. If your expenses exceed the revenue, you would have a net loss for this period of time. So we're going to put a heading on this called Revenue. And because of tradition, it has a colon after the end of it. So if you look back at your worksheet, you have one, and you're going to look at the income statement credit column of your worksheet. The uh, name of the revenue account is called Professional Fees. And notice how it's indented about a half an inch. Because we have just one revenue account, we're going to go to the right-hand column, and it's going to have a dollar sign there. This is not a debit, and this is not a credit column. It's just two places to record amounts. If you had two revenue accounts, we would put them here and here, and then put the total down here in the right-hand column. But since we just have one, it goes into the right-hand column. That's it for revenue. So the next category is expenses. So we're going to write expenses followed by a colon. Looking at your um, income statement debit column, we're just going to go down all of those. So salary expense would be listed for $2,935 and that has a dollar sign because it's the first one in a new list. Rent expense is the next one. And that's 1325 Next one is travel expense for $398. Then utilities expense for $196. And you can always pause this video anytime if you want to catch up with me. Notice that nothing is abbreviated, so expense has to be written out each time. So I'm just going right down the income statement debit column and recording all of the expenses as they appear in the income statement section of the worksheet. And as you can see, there are a number of expenses, such as life, right? And we're also going to get these new depreciation expense accounts. They go in here. So 
so every expense is put in there. Usually you see miscellaneous expense at the very end. This is the last expense. So we draw a line. Tip, sometimes you put a red line to show addition or subtraction, but for sure a single line. We're going to add all of these up and put the answer over here. So that's $8,393. And then under miscellaneous, we're going to indent a bit more and write total expenses. No dollar sign here. As we look at the revenue up here and we compare it to the total expenses, this business owner should be happy because they have a net income for the difference of these two, which is $4,196. So there's a single line under here because we're going to subtract these two. Your final answer has a double red line underneath it. And back over here, we're going to write net income. And again, if you need to pause this for a second, you can. So we have just done the first of three financial statements. The next one is a statement of owner's equity. So I'm going to go on to sheet four of six. Again, it's the same company. So again, pause if you need to catch up here. So Chelsea. And again, it's got this date that's for month ended, March 31st, 2000, and whatever the current year is. Okay, this is a business that's that's been around for a little while. So it did have a capital balance on March 1st, the first day of this month. So we're going to put down the name of the capital account, which is D. Chelsea Capital. We're going to show that on March 1st, it had a balance and so you would go back and look at your general ledger account and it had a balance of ten thousand six hundred seventy two dollars so there's a dollar sign here things that affect the capital account would be additional investments and then the net income or the net loss so during the month of march there were no additional credits to capital so if for investments we can just leave that off. There's there's no nothing to record. So we're going to talk next about the net income for March. Now, if you could go back and look at the one before the income statement, we'll know that we had a net income of four thousand one hundred ninety-six dollars because we got that from our income statement on the previous page. Another thing that affects capital this time in a negative way would be the drawing. So we're going to say less withdrawals for March. So less just means subtract. So we would find out what was what was the balance of drawing for March. And you can find this in the balance sheet debit column of your worksheet. The owner withdrew $3,500. Okay. So they made a net income of $4,196, but they withdrew $3,500 for personal living. So they came out ahead, the difference of these two. So we, because we made more than what we spent, we have an increase to our capital account for the difference of these two numbers. So we started off with $10,672. We have increased by 696, so at the end of the month, on March 31st, our capital account has a balance of $11,368. So that's our second of our third financial statement. Looking at the balance sheet on the next page, again we have the same heading, this time it's balance sheet, but I want you to take note that the balance sheet is for one day. It's not for the month, it's for the last day of the fiscal period. 
Now, assets, liabilities, and owner's equity are the three sections of the balance sheet. So here we go. Assets is centered, just out of tradition. Look at the balance sheet debit column. Your first asset is cash. And before we used to put them over here, but now we have some assets that aren't worth what we paid for them. Cash is worth what it says. So we put it over in the right hand column. Prepaid insurance is the next asset. It has not been depreciated. It's lost value, but it has not been depreciated. So this balance goes there. Equipment has been depreciated. We paid this much for equipment. We have depreciated this much. This comes from the balance sheet credit column. If we subtract the depreciation from the original cost, now it is worth the difference, $1,985. Notice there's a dollar sign here. There's a line here to show subtraction, and the answer goes right here. Office furniture is the next one. It's on the balance sheet debit column. We paid $3,680 for office furniture. We've depreciated a total of 3286 and how much it's currently worth is $394. Okay? And then we have our truck. We paid $23,799 for that truck. We have thus far written off $18,925. So the current book value of our truck, the difference between the initial cost and the depreciation, is $4,874. There are no more assets that we have, so we're going to write total assets, and we're going to add up everything in this column, and our assets are worth $14,471. You leave a blank line because, because it's tradition. We go to liabilities, and we're going to write liabilities there. You look in the balance sheet credit column for any account that ends in the word payable. So we have accounts payable, and, we're and we have two of them. So we're going to have to write accounts payable in this first column over here with a dollar sign. The next account that ends in payable is salaries payable. So we're going to write that down and put in that amount. Then we have to add these two together in order to put the total liabilities over here. So our total liabilities, $3,103, and we go over here and we write total liabilities. Okay, done with liabilities, we skip a line and we write down owner's equity. The name of the capital account, D. Chelsea Capital. We go back to the statement of owner's equity to see how much the capital is at the end of the month, which is $11,368. We're going to add the liability and owner's equity together. And when we do that, notice that this amount here equals this amount here. And that's why it's called a balance sheet. Balance, the assets equal the sum of the liabilities and the owner's equity. And then down here, you're going to write total liabilities and owner's equity. And this concludes this video.